See how I'm sipping my Red Bull? Very demure, very mindful, which is how I wanted this Real Housewives of Orange County recap to be. Very demure, very mindful. Except then I started going through my notes and thinking about Tamara and Emily. And I said, it's going to be very ghetto, very ratchet, very, I can tell Taria wants to take her foot and stick it up somebody. Hey y'all, welcome to another podcast episode for We Go Podcast, aka What Else Is Going On Podcast. I'm your girl, Taria. So welcome to the, what was it? Season 18 episode, let me get it right, y'all. Episode six, All Up in Drina's Grill OC Review. Y'all, so far, I am really, 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 really loving this season of the OC. I, I'm really enjoying it. I don't enjoy all of the players, but together they make the game interesting. Um, yes, there's some I could have done without. Let me tell you, I was never a Shannon Bedore fan, and I was talking to Carlos. Shout out to Carlos King. Hey, Bill. Um, who's supposed to be, we've had to reschedule him because of my schedule. He is amazing and flexible. He will be back on because y'all know he is the WeGo correspondent. But we were talking and like, we both feel like we weren't necessarily sh fans of Shannon. And with the way Alexis is coming at her, I like want to stand up with Shannon. Like, what's up? I dare you say something, Alexis, say something. Like, that's just how I'm feeling. So not to belabor this, recap and make it two hours. Let's go ahead and get right into it. So first up, we have Heather and Emily. And I'm sorry, I missed last week's review, but we know what happened, y'all. We, we I've been doing good. We just gonna jump to this episode, okay? All right, so Heather and Emily meet up at a cute little store. I'm sorry, I lied, time out. I thought that dinner was disgusting with Tamara and the way she was going on and on about... Shannon and being an alcoholic and trying to come from the, I would rather her be honest, stop trying to come from the, I care, I care, I care. That's why I go hard. Girl, that's not why we know that you're making a TV show. Something else I was telling Carlos that Tamara has been housewifing for too long to be this see-through. We know that you're trying to produce a story, girl, do it better. But coming after Shannon for being an alcohol for, you know, um, with alcoholism accusations um, under the guise of because you care is so tired through delayed, late, horrible, nasty. Like, I don't even really want to see that. So I thought that dinner was really disgusting. And then Alexis getting upset and her wanting to leave. I was like, girl, like, I'm tired. And by the way, Shannon never said I didn't get any money from John. So you showing two wire transfers is not a receipt. If Shannon had said, what do you mean? If they had said, uh, John loaned Shannon $75,000 and Shannon was like, what? I've never taken a dime from John. I've never gotten any money from John. And then she pulled out the wire transfers. We'd be dealing with something. Y'all take th th these housewives, take words and sometimes the fans too, and run with it and they don't be right. A receipt is proving something I said to be true, like having tangible proof. So Alexis showing a wire transfer or two wire transfers is not a receipt because Shannon didn't say, I never got any money from him. What she said was, I didn't borrow from him. Now, if in the memo portion or, or whatever, if John had to put loan to Shannon, then that would have been a receipt. Okay. And I'm, so, oh, I'm, oof. Okay, let's get into it. Now, what I say it was episode six. So Heather and Emily meet up at a cute little store. Um, Emily says she has the same hair and makeup on from last night. And in her confessional, she said Heather probably has a full skincare routine with 8,000 steps, which they then show Heather talking about the creams and the this and the that. And then she ends with a spritz of La Mer. And um, there goes her routine. Another side note, y'all, thank you so much for tuning in and either watching or listening. If you're listening, you can also go watch, get catch the visual on YouTube at WeGo, W-E-I-G-O podcast. If you're watching, 
please come on over and subscribe to the podcast. What else is going on podcast? And that's found wherever it is you find all of your podcasts. If y'all could um, do both, that would be really great and such a huge help for me. It is Black Business Month, okay? So y'all support a Black business. And if you want to do it for free, the easiest way is to subscribe to YouTube, the YouTube channel, and the um, podcast, okay? All right, now let's go into it. So going on, Emily and Heather talk about last night. Emily admits that she wasn't nice. And Heather said, yeah, what was going on with you? And um, and Jen, Emily said, it's not about money. Okay. Heather says, it sounds like it's about money. And Emily says, it's about integrity. So they show a flashback of the night before all of them at dinner, which is how they ended last week's episode. And Jen is asking Emily if she wanted to end on some positive notes. And Emily says, Jen doesn't pay her bills, girl. Ooh, the ladies say, no, no, no. And Emily says, if you want to walk around with a Rolex on why you owe all of Orange County money. And then Jen stops her and says, I'm not selling my watch. I love my watch. It was a gift from Ryan. Emily says, you're so effing stupid. Just so effing stupid. Sell it and pay back some of your bills. Now, I wanted to get into the Rolex thing um, because... Here we go. Okay, I got it. So Heather says, so you went hard on her. And Emily says, yeah, because you owe a bunch of people money while you're rolling around with a Rolex. Either hide it or sell it. It tells me that you're stupid. Heather says, okay, don't yell at someone because they're dumb. Who child. The next scene we see Amra of uh, Amra. <laughs> we see Tamra. And she's, at, I feel like I'm yelling at y'all. It's probably the Red Bull. We see Tamara yelling. At Get it together. I got it together. The next scene, Tamara is at the beach taking selfies and Jen shows up. Um, Jen is proving to be a really good housewife. I'm really liking her. I liked her last season and I'm really liking her this season too. Jen says the beach is like her happy place. It's one of the reasons she lives in the OC and she feels like the beach outing is exactly what they need. Jen asked Tamara how she felt about the dinner last night and about Emily basically coming at her. Tamara says that that's a lot. And Jen says she doesn't understand why she's saying pay people. Who do I owe money to? What is that even insinuating? I owe a bunch of people money. And that's definitely what Emily seems to be insinuating. Like with her saying, pay your bills, pay your bills. So are you saying that she owes more than just the landlord? Because that's what it seems like. In the meantime, they go back to the store with Heather and Emily. And Emily is saying that Jen moved into a house that she couldn't afford. And you owe this woman 20 grand or 30 grand, whatever. And you're rolling around in your car, not paying your car payment with a Rolex on. Heather said, yeah, she's clearly not good with money. In her confessional, Emily says, I had way too many espresso martinis and shouldn't be screaming across the table, pay your bills. Jen and her Jen in her confessional said, why do you keep taking these digs at me? Like, is it funny to you? Am I less than? Emily then in her confessional says, and the Rolex doesn't work. I asked her what time it was. And she's like, oh, I don't know. It's broken. It doesn't work. Jet. So Jen actually addressed this in a post, which is what I wanted to bring up. Now, it could be because I don't care for Emily. I think Emily's lying. I, I think maybe if she asked Jen the time and Jen was like, child, this thing, I ain't, I ain't wind it up. It's not working. I didn't wind it. I don't feel like she's like, oh, my Rolex is broken. Because why then would you be telling her to sell it? Because she wouldn't get any money for it if it was broken. So either you just talking to be talking about sell your Rolex because you want something to say or to try to be funny because Jen triggers you because of your own insecurities or Jen ain't never told you that it was broken. Okay. Jen did a post and said, Rolex 101, Rolex watches run on perpetual motion. I own two. My man at Ryan Boyahan, I guess, gifted me both of them. I'm not selling either of them. They are not broken. A Rolex has to be wound when it has not been worn. Much love from your dumb, stupid, no integrity, broke Malibu Barbie, ding dong land OC housewife, XOXO. I'm really tired of Emily and coming at Jen like this. It's really annoying. 
And I'm going to pull one more thing up um, because it's not, I, I, I get why you may, it, looking at her and she's still dressing up, still has all these things. She shouldn't be doing that. These are things she already owned, right? These are things, it's not like she, we're watching her go out and shop at all. So she already has the Rolex. She already has the, she already had the car. Ryan took over the car payments. Now she's um, riding around in Ryan's car and he's paying. So the car payments are being paid. I get trying to enforce to Jen now, girl, you can't go back in this spot. So you need to be looking for different avenues of income or something to not get or, or not don't go out and spend any more money flaunting when you need to be taking care of the things you need to take care of. I get telling her that about now moving forward. But she didn't go into this getting a home saying I can't afford it because she had someone who had been for years paying her bills and didn't default on didn't default before. So why would she think that now? You know what I'm saying? When she went into this house. So from Jen's point of view, it's like, I didn't go into this thinking, I'm not going to pay someone. I'm not going to pay my bill. She's thinking Will is going to take care of it. Because I think she was paying some and Will was paying some. And again, he's never let her down in that area before, right? So she's thinking, why would he now? Emily going so hard on this. I wanted to pull up this article from 2019. Um, it, it was in Us Weekly and also in Star Magazine. The one I'm reading from is... Star Magazine. I was trying to get the one from um, Us Weekly. Let's see. But that's all right. It's the same one. Let's get into the one from Star. Again, this is November 20th, 2019. The reality RHOC star Emily Simpson admits husband's parents bankroll their lifestyle. The reality star enjoyed a lap dance during the new episode. Um, let's see. Give me one second. Emily Simpson is shedding light on her marriage to husband to husband Shane Simpson. During the Tuesday, November 19th episode of Watch What Happens Live, the reality star revealed that Shane's parents are the ones funding their lavish lifestyle. She discussed how her marriage with Shane 44 works, including his parents' financial support and how the couple balance her more open sexuality with his more conservative views. So can we, let's run that back again. During the Tuesday, November 19th episode of Watch What Happens Live, the reality star revealed that his parents, Shane revealed that his parents are the ones funding their lavish lifestyle. She discussed how her marriage with Shane 44 works, including his parents' financial support and how the couple balanced her more open sexuality with his more conservative views. So baby, you were, Jen, had split from a man that had been taking care of her for all of these years and their children. She split from him and he says, I'm still going to financially provide for you. You are in a marriage with another able-bodied person and his parents were funding your lifestyle. Now that's no shade because I think that's great. If his parents want to spend it, like, great. That's something I would want to do for my children. You know what I mean? Not because they expected me to, but because I wanted to. But you're talking about how this man, I mean, how, yeah, how this man's parents were funding your lifestyle. But now Jen finds herself in a, in a bind, didn't do it on purpose. And now all of a sudden you're just the morality police of paying your bills and you need to do da 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 Girl, pissy missy, don't. All right, let me move on. I just wanted to share that. So we go back to the beach with Tamara and Jen and Tamara says, have you tried to talk to her? Meaning uh, has Jen tried to talk to Emily? Maybe she's going through something that we don't know about. Still no excuse. Um, Jen said she's talked to Gina the other day and Gina was talking about the closeness between Tamara and Emily. And they show a flashback of Jen and she's with Gina and Shannon. And Jen says, um, Tamara and Emily are like this, and she puts her crosses her fingers to indicate that they're close. Gina says they're tight, yeah, and I feel like it's changed. Emily, her and Tamara do this thing where they like high fives of who can be the bigger ish, uh, bish. I'll say 
I can be a bigger bitch. And that is, and that's not my friend. So that's what Gina was saying. Like basically Tamara and Emily get together and they're like, oh, I can be the bigger B. No, I can be the bigger B. And my, my friend, the one I know is not like that. So back on the beach, Tamara says to Jen, oh, and that's my fault. Jen says no. And Tamara says, oh God. Um, Jen says, no, Gina was just saying my best friend has changed. Now we see Gina walking up to a store and later on, she ends up walking into a store and she lets them know that she will, she's meeting friends there. So we see Katie show up. Gina asks Katie, how are you? And Katie says, I was hung over this morning. Gina says, well, you seem distant. I thought something was wrong with you. Katie said, I didn't want last night to be about Heather and me and the me thing. But in her confessional, she says, I'm a little weary of my worry of my weary of my friendship with Gina. She hurt me and she has apologized, but she's still on Heather's side. They show the flashback from last week where Katie was having a conversation with Gina. Remember, I think they had went to lunch and Gina, Katie is saying, hey, I felt abandoned by you a little bit. And Gina says, um, wait, I'm sorry. Let me, I'm sorry. I'm, I messed that up. We see a flashback of them at their lunch that we did see in last week's episode where Katie was saying, I, I felt a little abandoned by you, but Gina made it very clear, very clear. Look, I should have actually been on Heather's side more. So Katie says back in her confessional, you know, maybe Heather has more to offer her than I can. So then Gina tells Katie, look, she's definitely pissed at me. She's being cold and distant. So they show a flashback from last week's dinner gone wrong where it's Emily, Gina and Heather outside talking. And Heather says um, that she's very upset, but I can't do this with you tonight because there's too much going on, but we have to have a conversation. So now we go back to Emily and Heather and their meetup where Emily has on her makeup and hair from the night before. I'll give it to her. She did look cute, but that's all I'm going to give her anyway. And, uh, Heather's saying, I just need to tell her how upset I am. How could she do this to me? I feel so effing betrayed by her. Now, in her confessional, Heather says, why wouldn't Gina vet the information from Katie to make sure that it was accurate, which it's not. She makes sure to let us know that. Um, and Gina is in her confessional and says, uh, talking about Heather in this whole situation, it's become this thing in Heather's brain and now she just can't let go of it. We get a click a quick flash back to Heather and her confessional. And she's going, why, why, why? Like, why, why couldn't Gina vet this information? Why, 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 why? We get back to Gina and her confessional and she says, Heather's just effing sensitive, man. Well, if you knew that, then why would you want Katie to talk about it on camera? Because I have some questions about this whole thing. Because later on in the episode, Tamara tells Katie she's been set up. And unless I missed something, I'm thinking, oh, so wait, is Katie trying to say, they talked about this off camera because then even later we get into Gina evidently said she called, she had a conversation with Katie. Then she called Katie and there was a differing of timelines from 10 minutes to one day to a couple of weeks to say not to talk about it, which leads me to believe Katie may feel so upset. Cause I was like, Katie, you're the one that brought this up. But now I'm wondering if Katie brought it up off camera and Gina kind of encouraged her to bring it up on camera, but then says, I'm firmly on Heather's side. And now Gina is feeling, I mean, now Katie is feeling duped. Like, girl, you told me to bring this up on camera. Is that what y'all are getting? Because that's what I'm thinking. Like, they must be talking about an off camera thing that's now on camera. Anyway, we're back with uh, Gina and Katie and Gina says they have a lot going on. Uh, Gina says she has a lot going on and she doesn't have time for Heather's moments. Oh, look, I'm sorry. I skipped the part, y'all. Once um, Heather, uh, Gina said in her confessional that Heather was sensitive. We're back in the store with Emily and Heather. And Emily says to Heather, look, maybe she has a lot going on with Travis right now. Emily, I mean, Heather rolled her eyes like trying, trying to hear that. And Emily says, you can't roll your eyes at this. Now we're back with Gina and Katie in the store. And Gina says they have a lot going on. She's got a lot going on right now. She doesn't have time for her moments at the moment right now, meaning she don't have time for Heather and her moments. Katie says, I don't like that you're in that position, which is also interesting because you're saying that she put you in a position, but now you're saying you don't like that. Gina's in this position between you and Heather. 
She says, I really don't. Gina says, it's all right. And then Shannon, child, Shannon walked up like a ninja. And I don't mean the way we us black folks use the word ninja sometimes. I mean like a real ninja. Like she came from nowhere. I, I, look, I was like, what? Even her boots didn't even barely make a sound. <laughs> she just popped up from nowhere. And she actually scared Katie. Katie kind of jumped and was like, oh, hi, you snuck up on me. I didn't even know you were coming. Um, Gina tells Shannon, I can't believe you're taller than me because Shannon had on these really tall boots. Gina says, how are you? And Shannon says, I'm okay. How are you? Clearly, Shannon has lost her voice from the night. And you can already tell by Shannon's demeanor, oh, it's about to be about Shannon. This conversation is about to shift, honey. And it's going to be about Shannon Storm's Bador. Sure enough, G Gina says, your voice. Uh, Shannon goes, I'm tired. I didn't sleep a lot last night. Then she goes into how she got a letter from a law firm um, saying she owes John Jansen $75,000 in interest and attorney's fees. Once again, they don't just say John. It's either Johnny J on Alexis' side or John Jansen on Shannon's side. Like that's his full name. I mean, it is his full name, but that's like it's his first name, John Jansen. Gina says, so now Alexis Bellino is with two men who both sued you. Just so we're clear. And it was funny because Katie said, oh my God, what? And that it, when you think about it, it is wild. Alexis's ex-husband, Jim, sued Shannon. Now Alexis is with Shannon's ex-boyfriend, who is now suing Shannon. In her confessional, Shannon says, I don't know if Alexis is behind it or not, but the Bellino last name is associated with both. It's suspect, isn't it? Um, Shannon tells the ladies that, you know, her and Tamara are in a bad place, but she's really floored by some of the words that were coming out of Tamara's mouth because it's in flat. I think she said defamatory child. I was using speak. I was watching the episode. I watched it twice and I went in a third time to watch and take notes and use voice notes. If y'all see some of the words that Siri spit out. Nowhere near what I said. But anyway, they flash back to that dinner where Shannon and Tamara were getting into it. And Tamara was basically calling her an alcoholic. So now we're back on the Zen Wen beach with Jen and uh, Tamara. So Jen says, where do you go? Where do you and Shannon go? Because you go hard. Tamara says, because I care. If I didn't care, I wouldn't go so hard. I can't stand the way she does. Oh, that's me saying I can't stand the way when Tamara is wanting to make it known that she's serious or make a point. She starts going like, if y'all are watching, you can see, but if not, I'm shaking my head. Y'all know Tamara does that little head thing. And to me, it's a telltale. Like, here we go. Lights, camera, action. She's about to make this dramatic thing. So she starts shaking her head and she's like, you know, uh, um, she basically doesn't like that Shannon makes her the victim. So in her confessional, Jen says, I know that Tamara cares about Shannon. But I've been on the receiving end of Tamara. It's hard. And honestly, uh, the harder Tamara goes, the further it's going to push Shannon away. It pushed me away at the time. So Tamara needs to work on that. So I guess she said it pushed me away at the time. So I guess they got back. But when we look at the trailer for the upcoming season, we see Tamara's going to go hard again because she cares with Jen. Tamara says to Jen, I'm so angry because I thought this is going to be a wake up call. I thought Shannon was going to get the help she needed, but she makes excuses. We go back to Gina, Katie and Shannon and Gina is saying to Shannon, I don't want you to go backwards. Shannon says, I'm certainly not going to let Tamara judge have me go backwards. And Gina says, good for you, which yes, Shannon, good for you. And Shannon says, I'm not. Tamara tells Jen that Shannon acts like such a victim all the time. Then they show a split screen of Shannon with the other lady saying, and don't call me a victim. I said, good work, editors. Tamara says there's a big difference between somebody drinking and having fun and someone having an alcohol problem. Tamara, this is where she says, I just can't even talk about it anymore. Jen says, you're just going to have to take a break. They go, they show us back at the store with Gina and Katie and Shannon and Gina tell Shannon, you need a break, a real break. And you know that I have the listing for Elizabeth Vargas in La Quinta. I thought it would be fun if we all go out to La Quinta Thursday overnight. Shannon says, uh, will you be there too? Wait. Oh, Shannon says, will Elizabeth be there too? And Gina says, I think she'll be there in the beginning. Um, we get Gina and her confessional. 
Y'all heard that pause? Part of it was because I was like, where am I in my notes? The other part was because it's confessional. I am going to choose to focus on Gina's words and not what she looks like. She herself has even addressed this look. She said it looked good in person. I'm going to make it my business in this instance to be demure and mindful. Because that was a look. Okay, Father God in heaven. Gina says in her confessional, in this look, Elizabeth Vargas is a friend of mine and she's decided to sell her home in La Quinta, which is amazing. And she's decided to give me the sale. This is a great chance for me to make a getaway with the girls and check on the house. Katie then says in scene, I can't. Um, on Thursday, I'm going to Big Bear. And Gina says, you're going to Tamara's house. And Katie says, I am. Shannon says, oh, Tamara is taking people to Big Bear. Uh, Katie says, yes. Shannon says, well, I'm sure she'll take Alexis. Katie says, maybe. <laughs> Back on the beach with Tamara and Jen. Je I must have missed that part, even though I watched it three times. Basically, I guess Tamara brought up them going away. And so Jen says, well, what are we going to do in Big Bear? Tamara said, drive up there, go sledding, go to dinner, go to the village, do some shopping. You're supposed to be her girl. You don't need to be encouraged shopping. Y'all need to be up there sledding and sitting around somebody campfire drinking some hot chocolate and have a girl talk. She don't need to be at the shops unless y'all footing the bill like Shannon did for Gina a couple seasons ago. Y'all remember that? Anyway, uh, we're fine. Uh, Jen says we're finally, I'm sorry, we're finally back at the store with Emily and Heather because y'all, we had forgot about them for a little bit. So now we're back. Emily says, Gina asked me if I would come to La Quinta. How about you come with us? Heather takes a deep breath. I don't know Heather's dramatic. Emily says, Heather, how about you come with us? Heather says, yes. I'd love to see her listing. But here's the thing. I'm going to be upfront right now because I don't want to hear later that it was inappropriate of me to tell her exactly how I feel. I feel like I need to be more raspy when I do Heather. I love Heather's voice because I may get heated with this. So you tell me if that's okay if I come because I don't want to hear later that that was inappropriate. Emily says, no, I'm the inappropriate one. You are. And then they laugh about that. Heather and Shannon are now at Shannon's house um, and they're getting ready for their trip to look. Am I saying La Quinta right? I'll be wanting to say La Quinta, but I know that's the hotel. Or is the hotel pronounced the Quinta? Either way, Heather and Shannon are at Shannon's house and they're getting ready. And Shannon has all this uh, food on the counter. Heather says, what do you need to put in the ice chest? And Shannon has salads and all of this. And she says, I would just rather have too much than too little. Heather says, you do realize we're going for one night and everyone's on Ozempic. No one eats this month. No one eats this much. They start laughing. I'm liking Heather and Shannon. I've always wanted them to be able to be friends. I think they would have a lot in common. Remember when Shannon first came in, Shannon had a lot of money as well. And she had the house and the basketball court. And didn't she have gemstones or jewels or something under the basketball court and in her mouth? Like she lived the lifestyle that Heather lives, like that upper. And then you know, we know how Shannon was raised. I think it was a similar background to Heather. So I, I always wanted them to be friends. So I was, I, I felt like it was natural. Them in the kitchen laughing, talking about Shannon bringing too much food and Shannon really seemed relaxed. Oh, I got to talk about this part. Next we're at Shane and Emily's house and um, they mama in law's house and Emily, uh, Shane tells Emily don't eat in the truck. Emily's taking his pickup truck and she goes to take her bag out. And he says he couldn't help her bags because he has to watch the dog. He couldn't help her with the bag because she has to watch the dog. Gina shows up and Emily's like, you're late. And she's a mess. She says the contractors are at her house. And I guess they're doing the thing that the kids want in their room. Cause we see a flashback of the contractor, like ripping drywall. I'm still confused about what she was saying that the kids wanted. Did they want a, like a wall to come down and the room to be bigger? I, I just, I, or like, I don't know. I don't know what the kids want, but whatever they want, they're getting done. The contractors are there. So Emily tells Gina that we can't eat in the car. And Gina's like, what? And Emily says, I'm just saying that so that 
he can hear me tell you. So she says it louder. We can't eat in the car. Um, they get in in the truck and Gina says, I'm not abiding by that. And Emily says, she pulls out a bag. She said, look what I've snuck in, pulls out a bag of Twizzlers for them to eat. I'm not a Twizzler fan. Y'all like Twizzlers? Ugh. Very rarely. I, I've, I've got to be so hungry. I could eat a piece of drywall um, before I eat a Twizzler. So now it looks like we're at Tamara's house. She's walking out of her house. Katie shows up with her stuff and her husband, Matt, is there to help her because they're going on their trip. Now, I'm going to be honest. It, it had, doesn't even have anything to do with who's going on Tamara's trip. I don't, I don't want to be nobody's big bear with my coat, my, my sledding shoe, moon boots, um, where you don't know if you're on the right foot or the left foot because it don't matter. Um, I would rather have been in La Quinta at the house almost looking like a beach, like a resort. That's where I would have rather been on that trip. Anyway, um, Alexis pulls up and they talk about Alexis' sexy new car and she's trying to parallel park. A truck drives by and beeps um, as she's trying to park and she gets out. Hi, guys. She does this voice with her laugh. Where, where is this accent from? Anyway. Jen pulls up and she's trying to parallel park. So when she pulls up, though, Katie's like, that's a nice car. And Tamara's like, that's Ryan's old car. Because remember, Ryan took her car, took over the car payments and gave her his car. So she doesn't have to make payments. So now she's trying to parallel park. And there, uh, Katie says, we need to enroll her into some, like, basically parking classes. Emily and Gina pull up to Shannon's house. They go in and Shannon says, I need an ice. I need ice and a cooler. And Heather says, y'all, look all this stuff that she's bringing. So it's the chili and the crock pot. And Gina says, you're bringing a crock pot? Emily says, I just got a lecture about eating in the truck, and now I'm a mule, a mule for chili. Uh, Heather says, I brought a grill. And Gina's like, a grill? There's a grill there. Um, remember the store that Emily and Heather had met in? They had a cute little grill, almost like a tabletop grill, and Heather really liked it. So she ended up buying that. I did think that was cute. Uh Heather says, I don't want to mess up anything at the house. I know we're selling it, right? And it's just so hard to clean a grill. So I brought a grill. I brought a grill. In her confessional, Gina says, I'm really just hoping that Heather is going to grill hot dogs and not roast me. I said, whoever wrote that was clever. Um, that was actually funny. So they start loading up Shane's truck. Gina gets up front with Heather. I'm sorry. Gina gets up front with Emily. Heather and Shannon are in the back. Heather says, I love sitting up high. It's so nice. So then Gina does a speech and says, all right, guys, I'm very excited that we're doing this. I apologize in advance because I'm a little nervous about, you know, I put so much work into getting this house ready to take it to list. I don't want us ruining everything that I've worked hours to make perfect. Um, in her confessional, Gina says, I don't really think I thought this through when I was like, let's go to La Quinta. Let's have a girls weekend. It'll be fun. And then I was like, oh, shh. Bish, you staged the house. Um, she says to the ladies, that was a lot of chili and that was a lot of stuff, Shannon. So I'm a little concerned. The ladies laugh and Emily says that Gina is the chili buster. Now we're back at Tamara's child. They loading up Tamara's truck. And Jen says, who has a garment bag? And someone says, Jesus. Jesus, Barbie. <laughs> Because <laughs> they must be Alexis, because I guess Alexis has the garment bag. Katie says, I've never been to Big Bear. I'm so excited. And I think it was Alexis that said, you've never been. And Katie says, no, I've been to Mammoth. So on the way there, Tamara says, Jen, we're going to get you on OnlyFans. Uh, she doesn't have any money right now. Jen says, I got to do what a girl's got to do, child. I keep telling my husband I'm going on OnlyFans because I have tiny toes and a teeth gap. And it's going to be tiny toes and teeth gaps. And I said, I will show. And I've said this before. I'll show. From the top of my lip to my bottom lip, and then I'll show ankle down. I, I say it so much that finally, like two weeks ago, he was like, if you only showing feet, then okay. <laughs> I just might. Anyway, in the other car, of course, we have Emily, Gina, Shannon, and Heather, and they yell road trip. Heather says in her confessional, usually I would sit with Gina, but I'm okay with a little separation between me and Gina right now. As a matter of fact, I wish they had that thing in the car, like the zzz that goes up. She said that would be nice. So they pull up to Jack in the Box and they want to know what's on the menu. Shannon says, can I see the menu? And Gina's like, see the menu? 
Shannon gets out, goes to look at the menu. Someone says, can I take your order? It makes her jump. They laugh. They get tacos and fries and stuff. It was cute. So they get their food. This was funny. They get their food and Shannon's pulling out her taco and says, it's mushy. Emily says, it is mushy. Shannon says, it's very different. There's nothing like it. I don't even know if it's meat, but I love it. And I thought that was funny. Like, And then I saw a comment on social media. I forget if it was on Instagram or Reddit or somewhere, but somebody was like, Shannon's right. There is nothing like it. So if you're a taco lover, y'all let me know if y'all have ever been to Jack and Box. I've never been. And I'm not like really a taco person too much. As they, and it's funny, as they're eating and laughing, they show like a little clip of Shane inserted in the clip saying, don't eat, don't eat in the truck. And Emily's saying, what? So in her confessional, Emily says, Shane has high hopes that none of us will eat in his truck. But I mean, I'm going to say, okay, I'll listen to you. And then I'm not going to listen to him. That's just how marriage works. Back in the other truck, we hear Alexis Shaw saying, I told Johnny that I didn't know what I was looking for until I found you because I didn't even know that you could exist. It's pure poetry, y'all. I'm telling you, girls, I've never felt what I feel with him. Player's only a player until he meets the right person. What in the big pun punisher? I don't want to be a player no more. Um, she says, he is a true Christian boy. We went to Christian services on Christmas Eve. We went to two Christian services on Christmas Eve, like his Christian service and then like my Christian service. There are a lot of lies that have been spoken about that are not true and they're going to be cleared up. I'll bring it all up so that be better step back. Mm. She's so angelic. In her confessional, Katie says, I feel like I'm kind of getting to know John a little bit more than I'm getting to know Alexis. Jen has a confessional and she says, it's like information overload. Johnny J, Johnny J, Johnny J. Tamara then asks Alexis, do you get a headache from talking so much? And Alexis says, me? So in her confessional, Tamara says, with all the John talk, I was tempted to push Alexis out of the car. Back in the car, she says, we got a lot to talk about girls and we don't have to do it all in this car. Tamara said, that's right, because we don't know if they're going to show all this. Wait till we get to Big Bear so we can make sure it's end scene. Anyway, then we hear Tamara say, welcome to Big Bear, girls. Here's my house right here. The ladies get out. They're like, oh, it's so cute. Alexis says, now we're going to be in chilly weather. And, because, and when Katie gets out, she says, holy crap. Alexis says, I told you the minute you get out. Tamara opens the door and the house is really cute. They all love it. She shows them the game room and shows them Katie's room. And in her confessional, Katie says, I think Tamara gave me the best room in the house because I'm new and she wanted me to have my own space. They show Tamara in her confessional and she says, no, it's because Jen doesn't talk and Alexis doesn't shut the F up. So I figured they would balance each other out. She bought them all matching bear pajamas, which is cute. They tell Tamara the house is amazing and they ask her if she did it all, like designing it all. She said, yes. And Katie says, you're amazing. You know, Tamara was in real estate. Not that that has anything to do with design, but maybe she likes to do it all. Uh, Tamara said in her confessional um, when they got to the house that it had not been remodeled since the 80s. So she personally took off all the wallpaper throughout the house and then they knocked down walls. They ripped out the kitchen. They renovated the entire downstairs, which makes me wonder, are they doing the upstairs or was the upstairs already kind of like there's really nothing to do, just decorate bedrooms? Because there was an upstairs, right? Or was it all one lit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was an upstairs. So anyway, good for them. Uh, then someone says, Tamara, what is this? And they and there's water on her table. Try to look up and she has a leak. And she's like, oh my gosh, this was just all redone. Child, know that had to be a mess. Like, here I am. You know, we didn't just spent this money and now there's a leak. So Gina, Shannon, Emily get to Elizabeth's home and Shannon says, they, they pull up and there's a Bentley. Shannon says, is that her Bentley? And they say, yeah. And Heather says, it's fancy. Gina says, I think she got it in the divorce. Elizabeth comes out to greet them and says, Gina, welcome to your house. Cha Emily got out and got in a swap, that swap position. And I was like, Troy from um, Waiting to Exhale, you raggedy. If she get ready to piss in this lady. I'm I, trauma. That was my trauma response. I thought she was getting ready to piss soon as she copped into that squat, but she was actually just stretching because she was the only one that drove. In her confessional, 
Gina says, I've known Elizabeth Vargas uh, for a few years, and she's just a kind hearted, kind of kooky kind of gal. So they showed a flashback to the one season that Elizabeth was her first and only season she was on. The Housewives. I didn't watch that season. And Emily, uh, Gina was saying that she feels great. She just can't fit in her pants. Emily says, if you ever, uh, sorry, Elizabeth says, if you ever need to suck it out, let me know. I got a good doctor. And they start laughing. Looking back now, clearly we can see that Gina has lost weight and it looks like uh, Elizabeth has lost uh, weight too, like in her face, just everywhere. Um, they both look really good. Not that they did it before, but they both had talked about. I do know that they had talked about that before. So they both look really good. Heather did say everyone was on Ozempic child. Anyway, uh, Elizabeth shows the house and it's beautiful. She said it was a three year remodel. So I'm wondering why she's selling it. Is she like, did they remodel it for three years while she was married? And now since she's divorced, do they have to sell it? Does she just want to sell it? Because it is a beautiful home. Um, Elizabeth says, Shannon, wait till you see all the rest. Shannon says, I can't wait. And as they're showing the bedroom, Shannon says, this is the master, right? And you hear Gina say really quickly, primary, because we know that realtors uh, are not saying master bedroom anymore. They're saying primary because it could be considered, people could be offended by that. Slave masters, the master's quarters. So we're saying primary bedroom. Um, they go outside and it's absolutely gorgeous. And Gina says, this is worth the price tag. This is worth the price tag. Um, I believe it's priced at $8 million. So th the view is everything. It's gorgeous and so beautiful. And the ladies are telling her how beautiful it is. She has a koi pond. And Elizabeth says, the koi are starving. Gina says, oh, are they? And Shannon says, what? Well, wait, so is it like fish? Um, somebody, I didn't pet tube somebody asked her um how many fit how many koi fish does she have and emily says uh, elizabeth says they're supposed to be 500 heather says are you taking them with you gina says she just says i guess when she's talking about the house there's over 300 now to me when i hear koi fish in my mind i thought koi fish were just like a little bit bigger than goldfish or the same size i didn't know i thought they were really really small Child, when I seen them fish, I said, they, they look like real fish, like the size of fish. And the way they was jumping out of that water, I said, oh my gosh, it ju I just wasn't prepared. And 500? Girl, you have your own lake. I wasn't prepared for that. So, uh, yeah, like I said, I just didn't know. They were pretty colors though. So we're back in cold Big Bear and they're all getting ready to go sledding. Jen thought that her boots were two left feet. And Katie says, that's how moon boots are. Um, my daughter got some moon boots for Christmas. Her brother and her sister went in on them and got her some child, some of the moon boots for Christmas. Um, Tamara says, they really don't have a foot. Katie says, they're just kind of universal. In her confessional, Tamara says, now this is a reason why I would not take her skiing. I mean, Jen doesn't even know if her shoes are on the right feet. So the ladies go inner tubing and they're playing in the snow. As soon as they get there, Alexis takes off down on the inner tube, like, bye, and just hops on, gets down the inner tube. In her confessional, Alexis says she's excited to go inner tubing and to play in the snow. Let's have some fun. She's going to go down every hill. She says she wants light, laugh, and don't eat yellow snow. So they all talk about how high up they are. And like I said, Alexis just, I mean, no time. Boom, she took off in the inner tube. After she takes off, Tamara said, did she just really let go like that? Um, this one's a, a show. Then she... <laughs> Jen said, Alexis was like, do I really talk that much? And Tamara was like, just a tiny bit. So they all go down the hill. The ladies are screaming and it does seem like they're having a lot of fun. Uh, sledding and all that stuff. Back out the La Quinta house, they're unloading the truck and all this stuff. And Shannon does one of her little shticks and she crawls into the back of the truck. Um, and she's pulling out all the stuff. Emily says, I mean, so Elizabeth says, you guys actually packed pretty light. How many days are you staying? And somebody said, just one. And she goes, oh, well, maybe not. Emily says, um, are you, wait a minute. Oh, okay. So then Shannon goes into the, I believe it's Emily and yes, Emily and Shannon are in the kitchen. Shannon is putting stuff away. And Emily says, are you the only one in the kitchen? Where did Gina Oh, no, I'm sorry. It was Heather and Emily in the kitchen. 
Emily walks in and says, where did, um, are you the only one in the kitchen? Where did Gina go? And Heather says, I have, I have no idea. And the way she said it was just like, I have no idea. But Gina is outside trying to light the fire pits. Elizabeth is like, girl, I don't want you anywhere near fire. So in the meantime, Emily and Heather are trying to figure out just how much lighter fluid they need or grill fluid, whatever they need to put on the charcoal. So Heather's like putting a little bit of, they're thinking it. So they're looking for it. Now she's looking for the lighter. But in the meantime, Gina and Elizabeth have the little lighter clicker things and they're talking about Shannon. So Elizabeth, uh, Gina thanks Elizabeth, like, thank you so much for letting us come and stay here. It's going to be so fun. Shannon needed a getaway. And Elizabeth asks, is she okay? Gina says, it's a lot. So Elizabeth says, I'm glad she's here. Gina says, yeah. Elizabeth said, it looks like she needs a break. So in the meantime, Shannon is in the kitchen being Shannon, putting stuff away, dropping stuff, laughing to herself. Elizabeth tells Gina, don't let them burn the house down. So Heather's putting the lighter fluid on the charcoal and she's calling, I need the lighter. I need the lighter. I need the lighter. Like she's was kind of getting frustrated a little bit. It seemed like so. Uh, Gina and Elizabeth come back up with the lighter and they Emily's like back up because they didn't want it to go poof with the lighter fluid. Child ended up doing nothing. It was barely anything at all. So Elizabeth is getting ready to leave. She says, are y'all going to be really be okay if I leave you? And Heather's like, we'll be fine. And, and the rest of them are like, yeah, we'll be fine. Elizabeth says, don't worry about messing up anything. And Gina says, yeah, because I'm going to have to put it back together. So yeah, don't y'all worry. Um, the ladies of La Quinta are now preparing dinner. And Gina says, me and Shannon went shopping the other day and we got these. And she pulled out these really cute pink sweatshirts that say girl strip, unlike... Tamara's bag that say girls trip. There's no apostrophe in girls. I'm just being nitpicky now. That happens, but it was still funny. Anyway, honest mistake. All the ladies love them and they change and put them on right away. Heather goes to shake a drink shot and she dropped it and it's all over the floor. Like Emily says, at least it's not Shane's truck. Heather said, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. She gets down on her hands and knees and she's like Cinderella cleaning up on the girl's trip. And she goes, see, you can't see anything. Heather got everything up. Couldn't see anything like it never happened. In her confessional, Gina is like, this is how you know Heather's mad at you. This just feels personal. Like, do you want to murder me, B? Heather says, it's all clean. And like I said, it really is. She said, Emily's going to shake, not me. So Emily goes to set something down, child, and the stuff flies out and hits something. And now there's color, like colored food on the cabinets, on the floor. And there was a small part of me that was like, Emily, did you do that to have them on purpose? I, and I'm not even going to lie. I really thought that. Like, did you do that to produce like a little moment? Gina says, you know what? I'm going to say right now, my commission check basically is getting lowered. And then on the screen, they have, it's getting lowered from $539,700 to $463,400 to $280,890 to $98,020 to a $300 gift card. But I said when, I, I'm, I, I was going to say if, but I'm going to say when Gina sells this house, we're going to manifest that for her. She's going to get a nice commission check, $539,700. Okay, Gina. So they clean it up. Shannon grabs a cutting board. <laughs> From the cabinet and says, is this mold? Somebody said, probably. And Shannon said, that's mold, isn't it? They're all cracking up. But I could see the look on Gina's face like, this is on TV. I'm trying to sell this house. Of course, she's probably hoping to sell it before they're finished filming and wrapped up. But then again, we don't know if they filmed it at the beginning, at the end. You know how they mix this up. But obviously, at the end of the day, she wants the house showcase it. Now, here you are talking about mold on a cutting board. In her confessional, Gina says, say it louder, Shannon, say it louder. What else can we point out that's wrong or broken? Um, Shannon said, this is an, this is $8 million mold, girls. Uh, Gina says, by the time we leave, it's going to be about three and a half. Thank you very much. And Emily said, we're here to serve. So back in Big Bear, Tamara and uh, Janet is, I believe, are making drinks. And they decide to give Alexis the Kirkland vodka. Is Kirkland a store there, right? And so it's, is it their vodka brand or is there a Kirkland vodka brand? Either way, they're going to give that to Alexis and not the high-end vodka. 
Tamara, Katie. Now, y'all, when I tell you this was funny to me, Katie, uh, Tamara, and Jen were downstairs waiting for Alexis. And Tamara is like, Alexis, what are you doing? And Alexis is like, I can't find my hairspray. One of the ladies says, aren't you wearing a hat? And she said, well, not the whole night. She comes downstairs in a halter and some tights. Tamara says, you're going to freeze your behind off. Alexis says, do you want me to go put a sweater on? Tamara said, no, no. So Alexis said, should I put a sweater on? Y'all, she starts walking around and looking for Katie and Jen, okay? So she's saying, I need a consensus here. I need a consensus. She walks out of the room that they're all standing in and says, should I put my sweater on? And says, where are they? Katie is cracking up. And Jen is looking. When I tell y'all, Jen's face really took it from me. Jen is looking so confused, almost like, is she serious? <laughs> y'all, that was funny to me. Jen is looking so perplexed and says, we're here. And then Katie says, I'm in camouflage. Y'all, when I tell you that was so funny, I was like, she is so much in her own world. When she came down the steps, she would have seen like, anyway. Tamara in her confessional says, Alexis, <laughs> You just walked past us. Maybe Johnny J can get you some LASIK surgery. I hear he's good at paying for facelifts too. Alexis then FaceTimes John Child. You heard that. It was like, here we go. Oop, the answer. Um, she says hi and does this little laugh. Hi. Y'all, anyway, she says, how are you? I've been waiting to hear your voice, or your voice all day. How are you feeling? He said, I'm kind of tired. Alexis says, that's going to be a miserable night not sleeping without me there. She does another. <laughs> oh boy. In her confessional, Tamara says, I just want to have a good time. I don't want any talk about John or Alexis and their sex life. Alexis is saying in her confessional, if I want to have a conversation with my boyfriend, I will. The back in the scene, she says, um, when I'm with you, I'll just only have these on. She holds up her foot with her shoes showing her shoes, basically saying, I'm going to be naked, butt naked, and just the shoes on when I'm with you. In her confessional, Alexis says, we have enough sex without needing phone sex. Tamra, this annoyed me. Tamra then tells John via FaceTime, it's nice to see you, John. You look clean. You look ripped. In her confessional, Tamra says, John looks happy. He looks like a weight's been lifted off his shoulder, about 150 pounds of it. Tamara then says, for me, um, this is what she tells John. At first, this whole thing um, was a little weird for me, but any interaction I've had with you has always been pleasant. And Eddie loves you. And in her confessional, Tamara says, I know what a pain in the, in the arse that Shannon is. I don't know how he hung on for so long. I just think this is so... Simon had a story about Tamara when they broke up and Gina Keogh said he believed, she believed what Simon had to say about Shannon. I mean, had to say about Tamara and Tamara lost it because Tamara was like, basically I'm telling you what happened and you're believing Simon because Simon was uh, Gina Keogh's friend. Now it's the same situation and you're immediately jumping on the opposite side of what Shannon says, just because John didn't do the things that he did with Shannon or to Shannon, to Alexis, um, alleged things, doesn't mean they didn't happen. So for you to negate them, you've been around John long enough. You've even said things about John. But now Eddie loves you and all of our interactions have been pleasant. Okay. Anyway, Alexis says, I miss you and I love you. Back at the other house, Gina says, I'm going to go put the hot dogs on. Um, and Gina says to Heather, how do we know when, when we're done? They'll like split in the middle, right? And Heather says, are you really asking me? Like Heather has had it with Gina child in her confessional. Gina says, I mean, my Lord, I thought she likes, I thought she likes hot dogs. What do you want from me? Shannon and Emily go outside to set the table and it's really stormy out. Shannon says, Oh, it's stormy. And you can see the trees and stuff moving. Um, so Emily asked Shannon, would you like to have a seat? Shannon says, I'm so excited that I'm actually here with the three of you guys. And Shannon did look happy. Emily says, see, you and I are in a good place and I would like to leave it there. Shannon says, yeah, good. I have to say I was looking, oh, I have to say I was looking at Shannon in that moment and just her smile, her skin, her hair, 
even though her hair wasn't perfect, it was kind of like bed heady, but it wasn't like frizzy. And I think Shannon just looked really good in that scene and really happy to me. Um, she really, really did. That's what I thought. Um, Shannon says to Emily, look, I don't want to start problems. But when I saw Katie and Gina the day after the dinner, we went shopping. Gina and Katie were saying that they thought you were upset or angry. So they show a flashback to being in the store. And Gina says, I know Emily has gotten aggressive when she's being poked. But lately, this is different. I see her just being out of character aggressive. Emily says, uh, yes, Shannon, I lashed out, you know, at Jen at that dinner. And it was inappropriate. Shannon said, I understand. But Gina said before the dinner, you were so far up Tamara's arse. Uh, that you were becoming maybe more aggressive as you hang out with Tamara or meaner. So they flash back to that same night that they flash back to earlier in the episode with Jen, Gina, and uh, Tamara. And Gina is saying that Emily has lodged up Tamara's arse. Emily says to Shannon, up until that night where I yelled um, at Jen, which was inappropriate. Okay, we get it. You think it's inappropriate. You don't really though, because you would do it again because you said it three times. Um, I don't feel like I've been aggressive. Shannon says, have you fought with Gina at all? And Emily says, no. Shannon says, I don't want to make you mad. I hate this. In her confessional, Emily says, I feel very betrayed by Gina. First of all, I've always been mean and aggressive. Hello and welcome to earth. Okay, then you shouldn't be upset. Maybe you're upset because she's talking about it to other people. Anyway. Second, you've known me for six years. If we're supposed to be the best of friends, why are you telling everyone else? I'm pissed at, I'm pissed at her. Heather's pissed at her. She dug her own grave. Now I will say as much as I don't care for Emily, I would be a little like, girl, you telling everybody but me that you think I've gotten meaner and more aggressive. Anyway, Shannon says, can we go finish the dinner? And Emily says, yeah. So on the way in, Shannon says to Emily, I just want you guys to be okay. Emily says, my heart rate is at 8,000 right now. Shannon says, oh gosh, we see Heather and Gina in the house. And Gina is saying, I can't believe that women just used to like do this every day, meaning like the cooking and stuff. Shannon said, I did. And Gina said, this is like a whole day every day. Um, Emily comes in the kitchen and it just crosses her arms and is staring. And this is where I was annoyed with Emily. It was like, you didn't even come in, start doing little stuff around the house. It's like, okay, here's my scene. So I'm upset. So I'm just going to cross my arms and stare, making it obvious that there was something wrong with you. It just really annoyed me. So Gina just kind of looked over at her like, okay. Gina says to Heather, we need a pizza cutter. And Heather says, yes, we need a pizza cutter. Very. Heather said, it's gotta be like this. Um, Heather looks at Emily and says, what happened? What's wrong? And then she's like, so Emily goes, nothing, just nothing. Shakes her head. Heather says, what happened? Emily says nothing. So Heather says again, what's wrong? Emily says nothing and picks up her drink and says, I'm fine. In her confessional, Shannon says, I didn't know there was going to be this level of emotion with Emily, but I don't like the talking behind the back. If you have an issue with someone, just bring it up. Back in the scene, Gina says, I'll check on the hot dogs and goes out to check on the hot dogs. Child, when she opened up that lid of the girl and that smoke, I just immediately knew that they were going to be good. I was like, oh, they look like they're going to be so good. Shannon says, I just want Emily and Gina to be okay. This is what she says in her confessional. They have an amazing friendship. Gina walks in and says, oh my God, we made hot, we made hot dogs. We made the hot dogs. Gina is showing everybody, look, you know, the hot dogs look good. And Emily just kind of looked at her. And Gina's like, what's wrong? And Emily says nothing. Again, I thought the hot dogs looked really good. Gina says, all right, in her confessional, uh, Gina says, this home is turning against me. Emily is literally one of my best friends in the world. So I know when she's pissed. Um, Shannon then is, now they're back in scene and they're all getting food. Shannon is spooning the food and says, this is too much food. Gina says, I'm going to go sit down now. I'm feeling very weird. And then uh, Gina says to Emily, what the F is wrong? And Emily says, nothing. I'm just hungry. I haven't eaten anything. It's fine. Shannon was already outside with a white shirt, white and black, like Charlotte. And I'm telling you, I just really thought Shannon looked good. Um, the weave was blended. Like I said, it was more bedhead. 
Um, Emily then is out there. Shannon's out there. Then Heather goes out there. Emily says, I can't eat. Like, I can't even eat. And Shannon goes, I'm sorry. Meanwhile, Gina is in the kitchen and says, all right, it's going to be a great dinner. She's eating a little bit. Y'all were back in Big Bear and I instantly got cold through my screen. All the ladies are going to an Italian restaurant. Tamara asked the ladies, uh, what do they want to drink? Katie says she's going to get a dirty martini. And Tamara says, I'm going to try your dirty martini. Um, Katie says, well, if I drink anything with sugar, I turn red. I get my Asian flush. Tamara says, you get what? And Katie says, Asian flush. Have you ever heard of this? Tamara says, no. Alexa says, maybe you just turned red all of a sudden. Katie says, Asians historically can't break down enzymes of alcohol in their liver. She said, I'll take a Pepsi before I drink. And that'll help neutralize the alcohol. Tamara asks, do you get sick? And Katie says, no, I just get super hot. My face gets really red and I look like I have a fever. Tamara says, I've never heard of that. In her confessional, Katie says, so many Asians get the Asian flush. I don't think they have many Asian friends. <laughs> Back in the scene, Katie says, it's wild. My daughter doesn't get it, so she can just drink and I'll never know. Back at La Quinta, um, they're eating dinner in silence. You just hear forks, spoons, try to eat them. Now, Gina uh, did say, this is one of the best hot dogs I've ever had. And Heather says, it's a good grill. It's a good girl. Emily's not saying anything, but making it very obvious that something is wrong. And I'm like, girl, okay, we're not going to. Gina says, well, I think everything's great. And it's silence. Then Gina says to Emily, did you lose your steam? Emily shakes her head and says, I don't think so. Then takes a sip of what looks like could be wine and says, I've got a lot of steam. Heather's eyes, Heather's eyes got really big all of a sudden, like, oh, snap. So Gina says, what's wrong? Emily says, can I ask you a question? And Gina says, of course. That night you had your dinner. I was aggressive towards Jen. Gina says, yes. Yeah. Emily says, but you said before that night that I mean that I've changed and that you don't even recognize who I am. Gina starts to say, did I say that? And then she said, I didn't say that. Shannon says, no, she didn't say that. Gina says, I would never say that. So Emily says, well, what did she say? Shannon says, she said that you changed. Child. Heather chimes in, points to Emily and says, she's not the one that's changed. Child, when, when Heather said that, I said, here we go. Here we go. She points to Gina and says, you changed. Child, the look on Gina's face was like, now, now why am I in it with you? Like, how am I in it with you? I, it was just, it was just me and my best friend. So Gina says, you think I've changed? Heather says, yes. Emily points to Gina, but she's talking to, to um, Heather and says she was all about Katie. Katie was great. She wanted to bring Katie into this group. She loved Katie. And Heather was like, yeah. And then you had a conversation with Heather and then you were ready to throw Gina. I'm um, ready to throw Katie out the door. They flashed to Emily and Gina on FaceTime and Gina is saying this effing girl. I thought it, I th and she's talking about Katie. She says, I thought it was my friend that I've known for 10 minutes. I thought this was my friend that I've known for 10 minutes, now attacking my other friend that I've known for years. If that's the way, if that's the way it's going to be, then effing goodbye, Katie, because I can't. I can't. I'm not going to do this. So going back, Emily's telling Heather she was all about bringing Katie in this group. Katie, 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 Katie has a conversation with you, and now she's ready to throw Katie away. So then Gina says, well, I was disappointed in her. Heather says, how, how could you be disappointed in her? You knew what she was doing six months before. And this is why I think a lot of this stuff happened off camera, which is why later in the episode, Tamara tells her she was set up. Um, Gina said, but Heather, I promise you, I thought she was the genuine good girl. So Gina never denied knowing that Katie was going to bring this to the group six months before. Heather said, but I'm your friend for years. You don't know this girl from Adam and you and you meet her and she gives you this bullcrap information about me that affected my life. Gina says, I'm looking at her differently. OK. Child, we back at this ain't Texas, but it's Big Bear and it's cold, 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 cold. Um, Tamara says, so, Katie, I have to ask you the paparazzi of it all. Katie said, let's talk about it. Tamara said, because I'll admit it sounded a little suspicious. Katie said, the golf event did not go how I wanted it to. 
Tamara said, oh, Gina hung you out to dry. Katie said, oh, I know. Two nights before I went to Gina's house, we're trying on the golf clothes I gave everyone. And she's like, look, I don't agree with everything you think, but this is your truth. These are your feelings. I feel like you need to talk to Heather or I will. Now, side note, when Gina was telling Katie that I get given Gina kind of props thinking, oh, she didn't know, not even thinking that she knew about this information until they started filming and Katie brought it out, right? So I'm thinking, okay, props to her. Katie has talked about this. She told Katie, don't tell the other girls, listen, leave it alone, but you still talking about it. So now you better tell her or I will. So I was giving props to Gina in that moment. But now if she knew about this six months before and now you trying to play like, then nah, that, that is kind of foul. Anyway, she said that, you know, Gina said, I don't agree with everything, but this is your truth. These are your feelings. I think like, I think you need to talk to Heather or I will. Tamara said, you feel like Gina hyped you up for this situation. Katie said, no, but I looked over at Gina defending um, her when Heather goes, all of us agree that this is not true or whatever. And Gina was like, yeah, they did a flashback to the golf event. And Jen was saying that when all the BS came up, everyone, every one of us were like, it's a joke. Heather says, thank you for saying that. I wasn't worried about it. And Gina says, yeah. So Gina was agreeing with Heather, like, yeah, you shouldn't worry about it. So Katie says, uh, oh, Katie was at the table and her mouth was hanging open surprise. I, I, I do have to give Katie that when Heather says, I wasn't worried about it. And Gina says, yeah, Katie was like, oh, like she did look a little bit surprised. So in her confessional, Tamara says, I definitely question Gina's motives. She knows that Heather would not be happy about this. They show a flashback to Heather and Tamara and Heather saying to uh, Tamara, do you remember Gina sitting at the reunion saying to Shannon about the CPS thing? This hurts my children, Shannon, my children. So then they show Gina saying that at the reunion a couple seasons ago. Heather says, well, guess what? Fake truth, fake well, guess what? Fake truth, fake news, I'm sorry, hurts my children. Like, and I think she was talking about the rumors about the affair, which we'll get into later. Back in her confessional, Tamara says, so I don't know what Gina was doing. Maybe she secretly doesn't like Heather. Like she knows this would upset Heather. You know Heather well enough. So why would you encourage Katie to bring this up? Back in La Quinta, Heather says, Gina, I remember you sitting with Shannon saying you made up this BS about my family and it affects my children, Shannon. You know that this BS paparazzi cheating thing affected my children. In her confessional, Heather said, when rumors came up, come up, it does trickle down to my family. My kids were calling me last year because their friends are asking them about it. Max has anxiety issues. She's across the country at school hearing about this from people that she's just met. It's a lot. In her confessional, Gina says, Shannon making up a rumor about CPS and my children is not comparable to Heather Dubrow calling the paparazzi. And if anybody thinks they're comparable, they're an idiot. Now, like I was saying, I don't think Heather was saying the paparazzi rumors affected my children. But see, the paparazzi rumors are tied into the cheating rumors. Basically, there was rumors about their rumors out there about Terry cheating. So then these pictures of Terry and Heather come out and it's being said that they called the paparazzi and staged these photos to put to bed the cheating rumors. So the paparazzi thing is tied into the cheating, cheating thing. Like the paparazzi thing happened because Heather wanted people to forget about the cheating rumors. So I think she's saying these cheating rumors, she's lumping them all together. These paparazzi cheating rumors affected my children and my family as well. I don't think she's saying a rumor about her calling the paparazzi, stopping it there, that that's affecting her family. I definitely don't think that's what she's saying. Anyway, uh, let's see. So after that, uh, Heather saying, Gina, you don't think that affects my children? Gina said, you don't trust me. That's what the issue is. Um, am I perfect? No. But I'm not allowed to make mistakes. Never with you. I'm never allowed to make mistakes. Heather says, that's BS. Gina says, that's how I feel. Emily says to Shannon, I thought I was mad. And in her confessional, Emily says, my intention was not to have a meaningful conversation with my best friend and then get derailed. I had. 
She said, Heather just wants to swoop in and make it about herself. You can have her. Heather says there's a big difference between making a mistake and judgment in a moment uh, when there's a lot of stress. Gina says, but that is what I did. Heather said no. But when it went on for and she went to say, wow, Gina said, I did. I made a mistake in judgment in the moment. It went on for less than 24 hours, which again gets me to think this is a, the off. This has to be about being off camera because we didn't see any of this. Right. Is it is it just me? Because I'm thinking because again, Gina says. I made a mistake in judgment in the moment. It went on for less than 24 hours. Emily says, Katie, Katie said that you, she didn't call her 10 minutes later. She's talking to Heather. So Emily says, Katie says she didn't call her 10 minutes later. She said she called like months later in a flashback with Katie and Emily at lunch. Katie says to Emily, she told you girls apparently that she called me 10 minutes later and said, don't say it, don't say it. That's not what happened. Emily said, you're saying it was months later. And Katie said, yeah. Gina says, that's B. So then in, now back in scene, Gina says, that's BS. I called her the next day. So evidently Gina told the girls, I called Katie 10 minutes later after whatever, whatever conversation they had and said, don't bring up the Terry Heather paparazzi thing. Emily says, well, I met pretty much, I, Katie said, you didn't call her 10 minutes later. Gina is now telling them that's BS. I called her the next day. Heather says, that's important. You do know you told me you called her 10 minutes later. So Gina did tell Heather that because then we see a flashback to Heather's spa day at her home when Heather initially brought up why she was upset with Gina about this whole Katie thing. And uh, Gina says, it took all of 10 minutes, 10 minutes, and I called her. So Gina did say to Heather, after whatever conversation her and Katie had about this paparazzi thing, it took 10 minutes and I called her and was like, basically, don't say it. And then they show Heather saying, oh, you thought you could squash that. And Gina said, I told Katie not to bring this up. Emily says to Shannon in that moment, it couldn't have been 10 minutes or she wouldn't have done it, meaning Katie wouldn't have brought it up. So that's why I'm saying there must have been a conversation that Gina and Katie had off camera. Allegedly, Gina is now telling Heather. Because I'm trying to think, yes, they had conversations on camera. But if they had the conversation on camera. Gina wouldn't be calling her saying, don't bring it up to Heather because it would have already been put on camera. Even if it was only one time, even if Katie has said it to Gina and then Gina calls Katie, hey, don't bring it up anymore. We're still going to see it. They're, the, the editors are going to keep it in. They're going to show it. So that's why I'm thinking this has to be something off camera. Child. So Emily said, child, if it was 10 minutes later, Katie wouldn't have done it. She wouldn't have brought it up. So back with the cowgirls, Jen says to the table, I was there when Heather and Gina got together and Gina very much felt like you put her in a very tough position. Alexis says, how did she put her in a bad position? Tamara says, wait a minute. Gina knew it wouldn't be funny. You got set up. You got set up. And she starts doing that head thing. Katie says, you really believe that? In her confessional, Katie says, I can't actually figure out what Gina's motivation was from wanting me to talk about this. But Tamara, it's starting to sound pretty convincing. So Katie's now saying Gina wanted her to bring it up. Because it would be one thing if you brought it up on your own and I said, look, you brought it up on your own. I tell you to leave it alone. Then we're out of the girls night when they went out to that bar and dancing on the tables. And Katie brings it up to all the ladies. And I'm Gina looking at you like, girl, I told you not to bring it up. Now you didn't brought it up to the ladies. Now me and you meet up again. And I tell you, look, now that you didn't brought it up to the ladies, it's out there. One of them is going to tell Heather I'm supposed to be her good Judy. It's not going to be about me knowing and not telling her. So you need to tell her. That's one thing to be like, I need you to bring this up because you've already talked about it. It's another to tell her she should bring it up on the show off camera and then hanging her out to dry when she does and making it seem like you tried to warn her not to. 
that's something totally different. Like, totally different. Child, we're back at La Quinta again. And Heather says, so who's lying, you or Katie? Gina says, I'm not lying. Have I ever lied to you before? Heather says, how do I know? Gina says, I called that girl up and I said, don't do this. And I don't care what Katie says. You're going to believe that girl over me? Heather says, you believed her over me. I said, checkmate. Heather says she, fe Heather says she feels betrayed and she's having a really hard time. And Heather starts crying. I will say Heather's getting into it more this season, which I like allowing more emotion to show, which I do like. She's not doing that stiff upper lip. It's like, nah, I'm really upset with you. And now maybe, I don't know if she's upset because, I, I mean, of course the paparazzi room, or is she truly upset? Like, Jeannie, you had my back. You didn't have my back. Because remember last season, Heather was trying to be there for Gina. Gina claimed Heather wasn't there for her, but she's not telling Heather. She's kind of brushing her off, giving her the cold shoulder. Heather invites her old over and confronts her about it. And then Gina admits that Heather was calling her. Heather was trying to be there for her, but Gina was feeling kind of insecure around Heather. It had nothing to do with what Heather was doing. It was the way Gina was feeling. So then Gina was trying to be there for her and Travis. And then she tried to flip that on Heather. So coming into this season, I, Heather's probably feeling like, now you did me kind of dirty last season. I'm going to go ahead and not really think about that. But now here we are again, you having a conversation with someone and you want them to bring rumors about me on up on camera. And you're supposed to be my friend after what we just went through last season. So that's what I'm thinking. Um, so Heather was right when she says you betrayed. I mean, you believed her over me. So Heather starts tearing up and says, I felt stabbed in the effing back. Gina says, I understand that you're hurt. I get it that you're not going to get over it. And that's fine. But I need you to know that I'm really your friend. I need it. I made a mistake. I did trust someone that perhaps I shouldn't have trusted. And now I'm trying to sort that out. In her confessional, Gina says, I know why Katie has a different timeline. It's because she's lying. They show Katie in her confessional saying, why would I come into this group and just start lying? Child, we're back in Gina's confessional. And she says, and I don't know if it was 10 minutes or two days. Back in Katie's confessional, she said it was not 10 minutes. It was not one day. It was not even two days. <laughs> Gina in her confessional, because they're back and forth, says, I know it wasn't a month. Katie in her confessional said it was weeks then Gina says I'm not Alexis I don't bring bank statements now there's a difference because you did say first you said you called her within 10 minutes then you don't remember then you said it was within 24 hours now you're saying well look I just know it wasn't weeks and Katie's like or it wasn't a month Katie's like child it was weeks all right let's move on so Tam Tamara we back um with the cowgirl Tamara says let's move on uh, we're going to put you on OnlyFans, Jen. And Jen says, oh, I can't eat this pasta. I got to get naked. And Alexa says, check, please. Ooh, child. So we're back underneath the La Quinta stars. And Heather says to Gina, look, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. And I'm going to try and move past this. In her confessional, Heather says, I don't really need the big apology. I need the action. So there's no point in going over this again and again and again. I'm just going to have to wait and see what happens. And I never want to hear the word paparazzi again, ever. Neither do we. Neither do we. Gina says, um, wait, what happened? Oh, okay. So then they're at the table um, again. And Gina basically says, I'm pissing everybody off here. I'm pissing everybody off. And Shannon says, you're not upsetting me. And they start laughing. And Gina says, that's phenomenal. Shannon's just laughing. And Gina says how the tables have turned because it's normally Shannon, right? Um, Heather says, should we go get some dessert and sit by the fire where it's warmer? And Gina says, yeah, let's do the inside fire. Back at the Goldilocks house, child, the three little bears and Tamara come downstairs, honey. Um, Katie's calling them saying, where is everyone? So Tamara has a pie. Y'all did... Mm. Anyway, Tamara has a pie and tells Katie she needs her to film Jen putting her foot in the pie. In her confessional, Jen says, 
when I asked, how do I just out of nowhere start making money that we can actually live on? I thought my good friend Tamara would suggest real estate, maybe a podcast. Mm. But sticking my foot in an apple pie, I did not see this one coming. In her confessional, Tamara says, well, I heard from some of my good friends and people on OnlyFans that people pay big money for foot fetish stuff. I think she can make a killing. So Katie tells Jen, put it in there, put her foot in and push it around. And in her confessional, Jen says, only fans it is for me. So Jen put her foot in the pie, squishes it around. And then Tamara sucks the pie off her toes. In her confessional, Katie says, I kind of want to vomit a little bit, but I'm supportive. You guys want to do it? I'm supportive. That's how I feel, Katie. I'm about to throw up in my mouth, but if y'all want to do it, I support you. And, and Alexis is acting all prudish, like, oh my God, oh my God. Tamara tells Alexis, don't be a prude. And Jen says, yeah, you're banging four times a day over there. Um, she starts laughing and Katie tells Alexis, your vag needed a break tonight. It's good you're here. Tamara says, because he has a big wiener. And Alexis said, I'm not disclosing that. Tamara said, Shannon already told me he has a giant wiener. Alexis says, do not bring up the S word. No, girl, you don't get to dictate who they talk about. Jen says, Alexis, when do you stop the fight? You're, uh, you're on such a hell path. Alexis said that she wasn't, wait, if Shannon wasn't going around still making up lies about him, she wouldn't be on a hell path. In her confessional, Alexis says, I get really worked up about John because the man is nothing but kind, generous, loving, caring. And unfortunately, Shannon has ruined his reputation throughout the community. So like her saying that, so is he like not getting business deals? People not serving him at restaurants? People egging his house, throwing food on him? Like, I mean, not getting invited to parties? How is his reputation ruined in the community? Again, this is where I get pissed off because just because Shannon's experience wasn't your experience, Alexis, doesn't make it not true. It just doesn't. And it just, oh, I, I just, I hate when women um, do that. You know, she's coming up like, she, like she's some sort of avenger of John when she needs to mind her business and focus on her relationship that she has with John. Um, She then says, just be, uh, I guess John doesn't have, oh wait. She said he doesn't have a bad bone in his body and she's over him being abused. Y'all, I just, she said, I'm so over him being lied about. In her confessional, Alexa says, if the girls actually gave John a chance, they would see the man that I see. My mom recently passed away and John has been the only one that's been by her side. Now, look, I do understand that dealing with a death, especially a death of a parent and him being there and steadfast in your rock. I know that means a lot. That still doesn't negate the fact that the things that Shannon said went on in her relationship could very well be true. And you don't get to come in unless you have concrete proof and evidence about everything. Where are, yeah, you have the $75,000 wire transfer. Where are the receipts of John paying for everything else for Shannon? So you don't know that everything John says is true. You don't. You just don't. You were not there. You can only go by what he is telling you. Chomp. Um, Jen says, do you, think you'll, do you think you'll stop her? Alexa says, I need to pull out the videos. Johnny's ready to talk. So yeah, I will stop her. Jen says, what do you mean by that? Katie says, videos of what? And Alexa says, a lot. It will ruin her life. Tamara says she has videos of her the night of her DUI. Um, in, her, in her confectional, Le uh, Alexis says the videos are definitely horrific. Once I saw them, I couldn't go back to feeling the same about her. How did you feel about her before? You didn't even know her. Y'all weren't even, I mean, y'all knew of each other, but y'all weren't friends. Yes, you saw a video of her this one night. Even Shannon has admitted that night was extremely bad. Anyway, um, she says, once again, once she saw the video, she couldn't go back to feeling the same about her. Um, and Alexis says that she's pushed us, not John, 
Johnny J, John Jansen, us, because, you know, they're a team. They're an avenging team. She's pushed us to the point where if she doesn't stop lying, Tamara says he'll expose it. And Jen says, well. Um, and then she says, like, why are we here? Why are we here at this point? In her confessional, Jen says, Alexis, why are we even going here? Why do these videos matter? Why does anybody need to see them? Does anybody take into account with this, um, what, what this could do to Shannon's family? In my opinion, it's wrong. Alexis uh, tells the ladies it's 10 times worse than you can actually imagine. And in her confessional, she says, I definitely have said quite a few prayers for her. Episode ends. I think this part of it is really low down, trifling, tired through late. It's like Alexis has come on this show not to be back friends with the girls, not to hang out, have fun, kiki, maybe get into some arguments. She's come back with a mission and it's to make John Jansen look good in everyone's eyes. And I'll say this, when Shannon has spoke about his experience, her experience with him, it's not to the point of her really even dragging him with the way they are hurt. You know what I mean? Yes, she spoke about her experience and how she felt with him, but it wasn't like, I don't know. I just feel like this is just so low down what her and John are doing. And it's just, it's really pissing me off because I'm tired of hearing about it. And if she doesn't clear his name, this is what I'm going to do. This has nothing to do with you. Nothing to do with you. And I'm really sick of it. Um, I am enjoying the show, though. I am loving this season. I'm loving all the ladies together. Again, I may not necessarily like all the players, but the game comes together nice for me. Um, so, yeah, Alexis, though, I honestly could give or take. Um, Tamara like a dog or rat with a bone it's simply disgusting and the way she's handling this because if you truly cared even if you were trying to take a draw a hard line with Shannon you could draw a hard line without going about it this way we can clearly see you're producing for the show and that's what it is um, and Emily's following right behind you. I'm sick. Jen triggers Emily so bad. And it's the insecurity of Emily's. And can't nobody tell me any different. Y'all, I'm enjoying this season. I am ready to see more episodes. And y'all let me know if y'all are enjoying it too. Um, I think we're with, with this particular show right now. I'm just feeling like old school type housewife. Even though the subject matter is heavy, we are talking about alcoholism, which is a very serious thing, and different things. Um, with John, it still doesn't feel like there's a dark cloud surrounding it, you know. So, I do believe that they have managed to get this cast right. All right, y'all, I will talk to y'all later. See ya. Oh, don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast what else is going on you can find it wherever you find your podcast and come on over to youtube w-e-i-g-o podcast and subscribe again y'all it's black business month support a black business i mean and if you don't want to subscribe a simple cash app at t-a-r-i-a or my name taria s Faison. that will do too all right y'all i'll talk to y'all later see ya